Hi, I'm Jennifer Mulchandani. And I'm Heather Michaelgard. Welcome to The M Word, where we have uncensored conversations on all things marketing. Due to COVID, we are not recording in the studio and apologize for any poor audio or technical glitches. As soon as it is safe, we will have our guests with us in the studio. Until then, stay healthy and wear a mask. Hi, and welcome to The M Word. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Heather. And today we're talking to Jennifer Andos with Paperfish Creative. Jennifer is the owner and creative director at Paperfish Creative, and she escaped the agency world nearly 20 years ago. She is designed for Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and many other Fortune 500 companies, and now gives technology companies, nonprofits, and other small businesses the same level of service and creativity. Jennifer's strength is in getting to the personality of a business and telling their story in a way that is individual to them while introducing their greatness to the world. Welcome to the podcast, Jennifer. We're so glad to have you on. And I especially always adore talking to another Jennifer. I know. Hi. It's nice to see you. I know. Jennifer's Unite, for sure. There's a lot of us. Yeah, there are <laughs> a, a lot, lot of us. us. There yeah, are a lot of us. I'm okay with it. So, I am too. Yeah, great. I am too. Well, We appreciate you being here. Why don't you just set the stage for us and just tell us a little bit about your business and your background and and where you are in your marketing journey today. Sure. My business, Paperfish Creative, is 14 years old. And the importance of that is that when my son was four weeks old, which like today seems complete insanity, but that's what I did. And Paperfish does strategic branding and design And I don't ever say that I do marketing, even though I do marketing, there's a whole part of marketing that I don't necessarily do that I have total respect for the tracking and the date. That's not me. (laughs) I make it all pretty. So that's perfect to share. So paper fish, we do all kinds of branding. So complete like logo to personality, the whole branding guide, all that kind of stuff. And then we give people entire packages of Basically everything. The idea is uh, six months in or however long it takes us to do your branding, you flip the switch and all of a sudden everything is new. Your team has new apparel and your website is fresh and you have your new persona. Ooh, I want to dig more into your favorite. So I know you're a creative. Talk to me more about what would you, if you could do one thing every day in this creative Mm -hmm. space, what would it be? Oh, it would be message. I love the messaging part. Like, so I actually went to school to be a journalist, not for graphic design. The graphic design like, happened a little later. And so I love the message part. So I like the research and then getting the message. And then I feel like my art, my design is just the catalyst to share that message. So I love the messaging part, I think probably the most. So would you choose a rebrand or a new brand? What would be more exciting Ooh, for re- you? A rebrand for sure. A rebrand because usually those people have already figured out their niche and they're coming back knowing really what they do. I think all of us, a lot of us, at least I did, started thinking, I'm going to start this business doing this. And then time evolves and all of a sudden you don't do that or you do this and this and this, (laughs) especially when a business has grown. And every time you hire a new employee, all of a sudden you have new offerings because they offer something new. The excitement of finally getting your current customers to realize everything you do, you could feel it in the company and they are so excited to have this fresh new look. Yeah, for sure. Rebrand. I love it. Just to carry on that, a rebrand versus, it looks like we work with some really well-known established brands. They don't rebrand every day. The McDonald's of the world are literally your clients. How is the experience working with them on just their different branding needs versus creating the the brand from from from, from your scratch. imagination yeah it is the difference i would say is they are all, they're not rebranding what i'm doing is i'm usually doing a program it's almost like taking their brand and making it different so like you take their brand and you're, typically i'm taking their brand and combining it with something else like the olympic games so you're not rebranding but you're co-branding and so it is like coming up with something new with them though i'm following a creative brief i'm not <laughs> I'm not coming up with the entire idea, but that is usually the bigger companies is I'm coming up with an event or some other kinds of art that goes with it. It's the, I say smaller companies that I work with, usually like 10 to $25 million companies. Those are the ones that I'm rebranding. 
that are ready for something new. So you've been doing this a long time. Your son was a baby. How have yeah. you, how has your creative process and your skills evolved over time? I still make it a point of once a month learning something new. When you're in an agency, you're forced into other people in the agency are starting something new or clients are asking to start something new. But when you're by yourself, you really need to infuse that on your own. That's what I do skill set wise. I'm always learning some sort of new skill set. And I say skill set, meaning sometimes it could be as simple as better use of LinkedIn. It doesn't necessarily be a new graphic design skill. How it's changed <laughs> is a lot, so much. I think that's the biggest thing for me is that when I started, aside from a lack of sleep at the time, I wasn't sharing myself as much as I do. And I know that's partly also a trend now is to be open which is what my favorite thing about marketing right now actually is how people get pull back the curtain and tell us how you do it. I was really shy about showing who I am and all of my own marketing was very much, this is what everybody else is doing. So I'll do that. And I don't know if it's being older or just not caring anymore. I don't know what, but now I'm just basically willing to share any, really anything. My big thing in life really is humor. And I, I hid that for a long time. And now I infuse humor into everything, like my out of office message, literally anything. That's been my biggest change and the biggest response I get. Jennifer, I've noticed your marketing tactics myself because I've been following you for years. We've been friends for years and you actually did a logo for me a long time ago. But I noticed and love the cheers or the toast that you do weekly for, yes. for another oh. individual or company. No, I... and. I, I can relate to wanting to hide a little bit behind all of the things and your creativity, but you are so talented because I've seen your work. So tell me your inspiration behind the toast, toast? that you've been oh. doing. The toasts are actually a result of COVID, which I hate putting anything to COVID, but I have to for this. So last year when our governor kind of put everybody, and I want to say lockdown is a wrong word, but we all were supposed to stay home. Every single thing you saw, literally from every brand, every human was negative. And in these hardened times and all the things that people were saying, I, I just couldn't take it. I couldn't, I just didn't want to be like part of that message. I had decided naively that I would do it every single day until it was over. And at the time the governor said June 10th was like, okay, June 10th, we're all off. So I was like, okay, I can do it from April 10th to June 10th. And that's how I started. I did it every single night. And then June 11th came around and I realized that we're like, this isn't over. And so now I do about three times a week. And I just thank everything. I thank this brewery that I got to tour because I'm having an event there. But other times I'll thank like my neighbor. I mean, anything, everything. But so it has been great. It's like a gratitude practice for me. It's a great way for me to no cost to plug people who I care about. But it's just so great. And originally too, I was like really cultivating the photos and had a drink in my hand every day. And now it's just pure, simple, <laughs> like me yeah it's been really fun and now I'm going to keep that up I think forever I just love it and it just goes to show too of one of the pain points for any marketer or brand is that consistency you're like oh yeah 30 days no problem and then it's 60 and 90 and so I'm proud of you good job and I think it's okay that you scaled back yeah yeah I just had to cheers <laughs> had to. yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, but it's been good. It's been really good. That's great. I'm curious, one of the things you said just about your own shift and in, in how you do your marketing and you show up in your own business and you didn't use this word, but being authentic and maybe vulnerable using yourself as your own marketing. Did that happen because of just a confidence shift as you matured and felt, okay, clearly I'm running a successful business. I've been around a long time now, or did that happen? Was it, was there something else that made that happen? <laughs> yeah, I think it's common like fits and starts. Several years ago, I did listen to your mother and it was this event where you would tell an anthology about something that's happened like with your mother or about being mother. And it was a year, I was doing a year of yes that year. And so I said, yes, when somebody asked me to do it, and that story, most of them are like these like really gut-wrenching stories. And I went out there and I wrote a five-minute joke, basically. <laughs> and it was all about me and being a mom, but it was funny and like me being myself and like how I really talk. And it was so well received. Was, oh, okay, wait, now people actually might like this. 
And so that was the start of it. And then I don't know, the rest of it, I think has just been age and then getting used to it. Like you do it a couple of times. You think, okay, people are accepting it. This is going okay. Like any marketing campaign, if it succeeds in the beginning, you just keep seeing how far you could push it. And then I've been thinking about this a lot lately. <laughs> this is like ridiculous, but like when you're getting ready in the morning, I was like, huh, I think I'm getting better looking as I'm getting older. Or maybe I just don't care. But <laughs> either way, I'm okay with it. And so I feel like this is almost how that same idea is working with my marketing. It's I'm it's I'm good with who I am. And I think maybe there's like a tipping point. I don't know. Some people are very fortunate to just be born that way. I had to like slowly age into it, but and it's so much, it's also much easier for me now. Being authentic is so much easier than trying to craft the right thing. Do you see at all a change in how your business, your brand, and even just you as an expert are being received based on this pulling back the veil at, at who Jennifer is? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. The toasts have doubled my following and I don't have a giant following, so don't get me wrong, but I'm a great, very engaged following group. So that has helped and that's being me. And also just selling actually has been better for me coming at this myself because people I think already know what they're getting into, if you will. So when we talk, I feel like they've already learned who I am. And so that's also really helped my conversion rate, which I know we're talking about marketing, but in the end, that's what the marketing's for. It's really helped that it's, it really has helped being myself and being authentic has changed a lot. That's awesome because I think we're often asking our clients to put themselves out there, whether it's an individual or just even their brand, you've got to get out there and try things if you want to grow. And so I think it's always good when we practice some of that ourselves too. In the spirit of authenticity and recognizing that to err is human, you shared a story with us. I think we, we all can relate to as marketers putting a ton of time, energy, and passion into a goal for a client, whether it be a pro bono client or a paid client or doing it for your best friend. It's like we, yeah. we put this in. So you shared, you shared a story with us that sounded like it was personally painful because it was an issue close to your heart. You know, you don't have to tell us the name of the org, but if you yeah. could share with us a little bit about what was that? What was that big <sighs> fail, if you will? Yeah. So it's, a, it's an organization I'm a part of. And I'm not going to say which one, which is nice. I have a couple of nonprofits so they can stay anonymous, but there's one day a year. It's called Give Tuesday. That's what it's actually called here. It's actually the day of giving in the U.S., but in Loudoun County where I live, it's Give Tuesday. And it's a big day where all nonprofits are seeking funds and everybody signs up and it's a huge deal. And there's a big ramp up this last year. I had this idea I was given as my part in this plan to come up with a whole marketing campaign. And there's several people on the board and I, we videotaped all the members and I was thinking, yes, video. Everybody says you should do video. Video does well for me. Why should it work? So we videotaped all of the people. I gave every single person individual graphics that they can post on their social media to talk about the fact that they're on the board. And Every single day leading up, I was posting and sharing and no one on the board shared their video. No one on the board shared the personal graphic. I got like zero views on the videos. It was awful, just awful. And it was all that ramp up. And we got, I think we raised maybe $2,500 last year. And this year I did one post a week out, one post in the morning, one, and then I'll throughout the day, I always say thank yous to all the donors. And we more than doubled the money we got. Finding, I realized that they just didn't have the buy-in. Like, even though they're part of it, you really need the, in any of these marketing things, like your brand, your base brand ambassadors or your employees or your board members. And if they don't have the buy-in and they're not helping you, it's a struggle. And <laughs> That's so true. And I wonder, and I'd be curious, so you've identified the buy-in is a big one. It sounds like you are super enthusiastic. You created a multi-layered campaign with graphics and video and a posting schedule. And for non-marketers, does receiving that feel like this is going to be so hard, I can't do it. Like I just, it's Probably. too much and I don't understand it. Yeah, I would think so. And it, yeah, I, I think that's true. And even though, and I do this, even with product launches like this happens all the time brand launches when you rebrand 
is the company buying is a big deal. And so since then, I've gotten more detailed on exactly, literally go to Facebook, post this, say exactly this, like an actual step-by-step because it only still only maybe 20% of the people you send it to will do it, but at least you have that 20%. It's better than nothing. I have also learned the hard way. Don't assume that people know what to do and that yeah. you have to constantly remind them and yeah. almost be up in their face. Did you do it? Did you do it? I, I liked <laughs> exactly. your strategy. I thought it was a good strategy. Yeah. Jennifer, I want to ask you, you've done a, a lot of things over the last couple of years that have been outside of your comfort zone previously and whether it's age, maturity, we just don't care anymore. I commend you on all of those. Is there any tactic that you haven't yet tried but want to and just haven't had the courage or haven't had the opportunity to try? Yeah. I don't even know. So I haven't done any short videos, like produced videos. Um, I've done other like interviews like this. I'm actually doing another whole different thing called I must ask you a question and I'm interviewing people wearing like fake mustaches. It's on my YouTube channel. <laughs> so it's like super cute and silly, but I've never done like the TikTok kind of thing or the reels. I haven't done any of those. And I've always been, in fact, this woman, Carlin Akron, I'm not sure if you Carlin, and she does these cute how-to videos all the time. And I can never in my brain think of what I would teach in those videos. And I really think I would get success from it, but I haven't nailed down even what I would try to attempt to teach someone. So that's probably the biggest one. We're in the same boat. We just started doing reels and we've seen a huge increase in engagement. And so now we're trying to send that to our clients too. You know, how we can do this for you also. I found the easiest way to do it is just think of one topic or pain point and then three ways to accomplish that and just say it. Uh And then the actual reel and putting it together, that's what makes it fun and sing songy, but it just... Me personally, I was overthinking it and it's really super easy. And I agree, Carlin does a fantastic job at those. So... (laughs) Maybe you and I can do those together. I I did my first one yesterday and it was really easy. So good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So Jennifer, and you mentioned Carlin, who we we also know and and admire her work. Are there other people you look up to in the business or resources that you follow to stay current on in terms of your areas of expertise? I do. I, of course, like I think any person in marketing, I'm obsessed with Seth Godin. I think it's his, not just, it's like it literally his voice. When I listen to him, the way he talks is amazing, but he's just, every time I listen, there's something that really hits home. There's a closed Facebook group called the Daily Carnage, and it's my absolute favorite thing I read every single day. It's all marketing people and it's amazing. And it is literally carnage. So you have to be prepared to go on there and see people ripping other people's marketing. But mostly it's people like me looking for, I need a new CRM platform. I need whatever. And the advice on there is always the best. Who else? And then otherwise podcasts, I actually listen just to Smartless. I don't know if you guys have listened to Smart List, but it's the funniest thing in podcasts. Absolutely. Have to hear it, I guess. But is it an industry or a topic? No. Okay. No, it's Smart List. This is actually part of how I started doing these mustache interviews. It's Jason Bateman and, I don't know, two other actors. And they interview people that are smarter than they are. And that's the whole point of it. And it's great. And so I loved that format of just talking and letting them lead what they would talk about. So that's how I started to do my interview things because of that. It's just, I can relate. I feel like that's what this is. Like we Mm -hmm. having folks like yourself, who are just amazing experts in what they're doing and we get to just pull out of them some nuggets of information. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Mm-hmm. So Jennifer, if you could go back to the first day you started Paperfish Creative <laughs> and look at yourself, what advice would you give yourself on that very first day? I start marketing now. <laughs> so Lisa, when I started, I had a, had a business before. And so I very much relied on those old clients and I still get a, a 
big dose of my business from word of mouth. But I don't think I realized at the time that even that word of mouth business needs the marketing. So even if you keep getting referrals, those referrals finally call you because they saw your marketing. And I definitely did not realize that at the time. I just thought that people just kept calling because they got referred and that was it. But it's not as simple as that. You still need all those other touch points before they still even referrals pick up the phone. And I had no idea. And I will say this is a plug for Paperfish. You are memorable to me. Your client gifts are amazing. (laughs) Um, I think one year you did coloring book. Another year you did a hot pad. And I just, I think those little small touches, they make a big difference. And not to mention you produce amazing websites and just a plug for Paperfish Creative. It's been a brand that I've been following and highly recommend for years. Thank you. Thank you. I do love it. I do love it. So Jennifer, if our listeners want to get more doses of you, of Jennifer and Paperfish Creative, where can they find you? So of course I have a website, paperfishcreative.com. My Instagram is paperfishjen. And the reason is, as you, Jennifer, there's like a million Jennifers out there. And so people have often ended up calling me, oh, that paperfish Jen. So that became my nickname. <laughs> so I just use that as my handle. So paperfish Jen on um, Instagram. I'm on Twitter, but not as much as I should be. And then of course, Jennifer Andos on LinkedIn. Those are my main places. Oh, I do have a YouTube channel too. If you want to see the mustache videos of which the laugh tracks are fantastic at paperfish creative YouTube channel. <laughs> That's what I want to go check out. I don't know if this is going to be too much pressure. I don't want to end with you feeling put on the spot, but can you close this out with a a joke or or a funny story? A funny story. Oh, geez. I'm trying to think of something funny. Oh my gosh. I feel like my whole life is like a funny story. Let me think. No, I don't know. I'm sure there is one, but I, it's, it's well, if you're like, if you're enough. like me, if you're like me, the, the, then as soon as we stop recording, you're going to be like, damn yeah, it. Exactly. I just, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm I always know, five, five clicks too late. I'm not I, a quick uh, tongued person. So <laughs> yeah. no um, pressure. Jennifer Mulchandani. Can I just say, I think that was our first swear word on the podcast. <gasps> Which one? You said the D word. <laughs> your your bar your bar for a swear word is very different than mine. <laughs> I've just been waiting for someone to say a swear word. So. To swear, I know. I can't believe. I know this is like killing me that I can't think of a funny story because my whole I feel like everything that happens to me in life has been some sort of crazy event of some sort. <laughs> Although I will tell you, okay, so this is a true story. When I moved here um, seven years ago to Virginia, and so I don't know what year that was, but in 2016, I was nominated for a small business award in Virginia, in Loudoun County. And I'm super nervous. I don't know anybody. I'm not even sure. I know our friend Daniela nominated me. Daniela Williams, but I'm walking up to this thing and it's in Morven Park and this beautiful building. And that day it's super windy, like today, like crazy windy. And I'm nervous. My hair is blowing all over the place and you don't know what you're going to wear. And I go up and it's a gravel (laughs) driveway outside and I slip and fall. So I walk into this interview with my hair all over crazy and both my hands are bleeding. Like I'm bleeding everywhere. My hair is a mess. It was like, it didn't even matter that I did it. And I, it was awful. That was the first time I met anyone that worked at the chamber and it was so embarrassing. Oh my God, it was embarrassing. You didn't laugh that day, (laughs) did you? But you're laughing today. I did not. But I did, but I ended up winning that year, which is crazy. And then I went to the event and everybody at the event was, they go through like the five people in your category and everybody's having... And I win, and it's like crickets. <laughs> Nobody's clapping, nothing, because nobody in the room knew who I was. <laughs> That's crazy. It was crazy. But they vote on this, like, package this thing. So I had an established business. Just nobody here knew that it was an established. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know if it's funny then, but it's hilarious to me now. I I think that's just great life advice that even the things that might make you cry one day, someday later becomes really good fodder on a podcast. 
Oh, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You never know. I know. You never know. Yeah. Jennifer, we've had a lot of fun today and really appreciate your time and you sharing a bit of your marketing journey and story and your, your humor with us. And uh, thanks for li- listening in and see you soon. Yeah, thank you. It's so fun. It's great to see you, Heather. Nice to meet you, Jen. Good to see you. Bye. Thanks for listening. We hope you'll come back. Subscribe to The M Word wherever you listen to podcasts. And for more uncensored conversations, visit the M Word page at arlingtonstrategy.com.